What is up guys and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you guys are new. Hi, it's Keisha, nice to meet you all. Get in here because bro, we need to get into some things, all right? So basically there is this TikToker who goes by the name of Fanita. Fanita? Well, Americans say Fanita, but then that would be with D and not a T. Sorry, sorry, I'm just thinking out loud. But yeah, she goes by the name of Fanita. I do typically watch her content. I find her funny. I do like her personality, you know? And that's why it makes this video even more harder to make as somebody who is like a fan of hers, who has kind of like been a part of the, her journey or so it feels like. She's very outspoken and she prides herself on that. And I'm very outspoken myself, always giving my thoughts and opinions and just speaking up on things. Again, I really loved that about Fanita until things started going left real quickly i'm just gonna have an open ass conversation with you guys it's gonna be like a rant style i'm gonna say what i feel like needs to be said to be completely honest with you um and i'm gonna keep it real i want to start this video by saying that finita has been very open about the struggles that she's dealt with being a plus size woman being dark skinned and being in this space where it typically doesn't favor those two things you know being plus size and being dark skinned black i think it's kind of like common knowledge at this point to know that there is a difference in the way people treat people of color as opposed to people who are not of color, you know? And I think that if by now, in 2024, you don't understand that, then I don't know what to say to you. Like, I don't know how much education you need when it comes to that. I think it's common knowledge now, unfortunately. Do I think things are getting a little bit better? Yes, but I do think there's still a difference in which the way brands and companies pay white creators as opposed to black creators. Now, I want to start off by saying this. Number one, I think where Finita went wrong is the fact that, and also I just want people to understand that you can't be mad at Finita now for just talking a lot, constantly making videos when that's her thing, you know, that's her thing. And that's not me trying to defend Finita, but like I said earlier, if we're gonna have an honest ass conversation, we gotta make sure we keep it real and we stick to the facts here. Finita been doing that. She will post several videos just like, honestly, honest to God, as, I, as much as I find it entertaining, sometimes she just waffles. I don't know what it is that she's saying, but I just enjoy her content and I go through the comments and everything. So that's been Fanita's thing. She just talks and talks and talks and talks and talks. And um, if she's not doing that, then she is on her podcast. I mean, still talking. Um, Bottoms Up with Fanita, which I also watch. I think it comes out every Monday. So I do typically watch it before like, I go to bed. If she's not doing that, then she's first over white boys who probably just are never gonna claim you and who deep down probably don't like you. I mean, like deep, deep, deep down. But we're gonna go ahead and touch upon that very shortly. My thing is, you can't be mad at Fanita for just constantly picking up her phone and making videos and then posting them. That's what Fanita does. And it's not gonna stop anytime soon. In my humble opinion, I feel like she's playing a game. I know people are saying that she's going on these like coke rants. She's having a manic episode. I think this is done deliberately. I just can't prove it. I just literally can't prove it yet, okay? I think that this new trend, it's not new, but I think, listen, it's been around for a long time now, but I feel like creators are trying to do this thing of rage baiting. They know how to get people talking about them. And some people generally just don't give a flying F. They don't care whether you have good things to say about them, bad things to say about them, whether you feel they're a little bit questionable, controversial, they just don't give a flying F. As long as you have their name in your mouth, and as long as you're coming back to give them engagement, that's how the bills are being paid. We need to be smart now, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Do I think she's bitter because she lost the weight and she thought she was gonna be treated differently. I think she is bitter. And I think that she's taking it out on her fans. She's taking it out on the supporters and people who give her the real advice. My thing is, where are your friends? So I have a lot of fucking friends, right? And I have the United Nations of friends. I have friends from every different background, ethnicity, nationality, whatever. Where are your friends, the friends that you talk about on the podcast, the ones that you hang out with, you know, when you're having boy problems, you call those people up. Like, where are your friends out? Where, where are they at? That's number one, because I'm sorry, whilst you're going out sad, your friends have also encouraged that. And that's why like we need to, I've always said this, if you guys are like long time viewers of mine, we keep using the word friends, but these times, where they at though? I believe she's got a lot of friends in the um, influencer space. Like I'm sure they're seeing Finita videos pop up in their For You page because I'm seeing so many, okay? Where are they? You shouldn't be classifying everyone as a friend. A real friend will tell you to shut the F up. They wouldn't even be like, Finita, what are you doing? It'll be like, girl, shut up. Like, it's actually too much. Now, every single day, me personally, I'm waking up, stretching, uh, yawning, had an amazing sleep. Fun fact, I actually went to do um, 7,000 steps today. That's my first time. I'm trying to do this, like, fitness thing. I don't know how it's going to go, but, I mean, we're starting. So if you want to follow along with me and just do, like, this whole fitness thing. And the thing is, also, tangent, um, 
there isn't necessarily, I mean, there, I do have my goals, but it's not about like losing weight necessarily or gaining weight. It's just about being fit and healthy and gut health as well. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. Anyways, um, yeah, so I, I, you know, I went for a walk today. I did like, what, 7,000 steps. I came home. I'm like, you know what? I've done a lot today. <laughs> I, I've done a lot today. Let me go on TikTok as you do to just unwind. The first video I see is Vanita literally begging people for money. A lot of y'all argue once a man takes in my DMs. Y'all are like, Vanita, but you called us broke. Now you want here begging us to cash up you? Yes. <laughs> yes. Why are you arguing semantics? I'm absolutely begging. I'm absolutely begging for change. Yes, I am. Because I can't work for free on Twitch. Sorry. That takes a lot. I need you bitches to f fucking pay me some money. Um, also, this is just a life lesson that anything can happen. Even the people that are on top that rule the world can, can, can walk among civilians again. And I'm walking among civilians again. I quit TikToking to Twitch stream. So I'm sorry, but you hoes gonna have to pay me. Right? If I'm going to be talking and entertaining y'all for hours on end, y'all going to have to throw some money and make me and make my ass shake like a goddamn stripper at Tussies. And I'm not playing. So it's cash out for me to like it and stop fucking playing with me. And stop asking me questions. Yes, I'm begging. And yes, I'm begging for money after I called y'all broke. Now what about it? Send me some money or shut the fuck up. Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? And I would say respectfully, but respect left the door when you started calling people brokies. And that being your own followers too. But then in that same breath, you need money now. Baby, what? And apparently now you've quit TikTok and you're now a Twitch streamer. Okay, girl. If that's the bag you've chosen, that's the bag. Please, come on and go over there. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I just don't understand it. I hate a, I hate an entitled person, point blank period. But there's nothing worse than an entitled influencer. Like, shut up. What? I can never sit down on camera and be like, you guys are going to send me money. You guys have to do that. No. No. Cause that's another level of damn bad. I'm not doing that to my platform. And the thing is people are probably gonna come through and send her sh the shakoin and she knows that. The bitch ain't broke. The bitch ain't broke. Finita girl, I know you see me. Girl, you're not broke. And it feels so random is the thing. It feels so random. People are saying that, okay, so she lost the weight now. I think that she's gotten lipo. I'm not really necessarily sure. I forget what she's gotten done, but she's gotten some, a few things done. And, you know, at the end of the day, if you're doing things for the betterment of you, then great. But it doesn't necessarily seem like it's done genuinely because you really wanted these things. I think you thought that by being skinny, it was going to make you a completely different person, but it's made you so bitter and entitled and mean. And my thing is, yeah, I love me a little bit of shade. You guys know that if you watch me, I love me some shade. I can keep up with it. Don't take me too seriously. But Fanita wants you guys to take her seriously when she says you are broke. Like, why are you talking about people's tax brackets, people's incomes, talking about locations where people live and how certain things, like it's just not a cute look. You were, I'm sure, in that same position, if not worse. We all have a story. It just comes across as like quite snarky, quite like slick with your tongue. And baby, my thing is, who are you talking to? Because don't come asking us for forgiveness in like a month or two when you've actually come to your senses or when the game is over. You would have lost a lot of people by then, okay? Um, yeah, so I've never been plus size, okay? Am I black? Yes. Am I dark skinned? Yes. I've never been plus size before, so I'm not even going to pretend to speak on what that's like. I'll leave it for someone else who's probably lived that, experienced in that, whatever. I am black and I do feel different from other creators, period, but from other creators, even in my space of commentary, gossip tea, you name it, right? Like I'm definitely an outspoken young lady. <laughs> I love it, I do love it. I try to like think before I speak, sometimes I don't, but I don't think I've ever gone too far to literally be judgmental to my audience and don't really understand the anger for white people. Now hear me out, listen, everybody's got their story of like, okay, like I, I experienced this racism in high school or at the workplace, I feel like this, I feel like that, I feel like this. Everybody has their story. I'm not gonna take that away from you, nor am I gonna try and do that. Everybody has their story, but the way that she speaks about black, I'm sorry, about white influencers, I'm just like, girl, or just white people in general, I'm just like, it, it, it doesn't sound right. Now, granted, maybe it was those white people who bullied you and said like, oh my God, you're fat, you're overweight, you're ugly, you're black, you're this, you're that. You have to get to a place of healing and it's not gonna be an easy journey, but you've got to literally start therapy. Girl, are you not the same person who advertises better help? Like, I mean, I've heard some things about better help. Maybe we don't do better help. But if you need a couple places, come ask me. <laughs> I've got you. I've got you. I've got some resources. I've got you. They ain't even that pricey too. I've got you. My goodness, therapy is one of the best things you could do. Putting yourself out there, being vulnerable. Finita, that's what you need. That's what you need. And not to always like, 
talk, 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 but be open to listen to what it is that's being said to you as well on the receiving end, the advice that people are giving you. Because when I go through a comment section, it's not all nasty. It's not all conniving, mean-spirited comments. There's people generally advising you like, girl, put the phone down, we love you, but right now something isn't right. Do not pick up your phone to film because we don't want to see it. You're hurting us now as your audience. When she lost the weight, she thought that everybody was going to bow down to her and see her as like the baddest bitch ever alive. And it's like, no, people don't see you as that. And you have to be okay with that. You shouldn't be living for um, compliments. That's what she strikes me as. I think that she wants to constantly be told a million times a day that she's the baddest bitch alive. And if someone feels that about you, then yeah, they can vocalize it. But even people who feel that way about you don't have to necessarily vocalize that about you. They can just have, it's just that feeling. But Fanita wants to constantly hear it. And that's the thing. Whilst we're talking about Fanita here, there's plenty of people who act like this. There's plenty of people I can think of from my high school who just come across as very entitled and nasty because they were once upon a time bullied. But my thing is, shouldn't you be doing the opposite now? Like, you know what it feels like to be bullied. Why are you going to go and do it to other people? Fanita does come across as quite mean. That's the thing. Have I always felt this way about her? No. Do I think that sometimes she just is like, loud and wrong wrong and strong yes i do i do but i think that's a bad trait to have to be completely honest with you you have to be open to the fact that ah sometimes just sometimes this was a bad take we will talk about this a little bit more later on in the video but i think Fanita should have used the example of britney broski instead of alex l for comparison alex l a beauty influencer keep up with me I'm not gonna sit down here and pretend that I've watched an Alex L video. No, I don't. But I know that she's a beauty influencer. I've seen her once or twice on my For You page and I kept it scrolling respectfully. Beautiful, beautiful woman. It's just not for me. Alex L's bag is different from Fanita because she's a beauty influencer. And we all know beauty influencers get paid a bazillion like way too much like let's be honest way too much their bag is completely different from a comedian from somebody who rants and all of that people are also saying that alex l's content is brand friendly brand safe as opposed to finita's now finita does drop a lot of f-bombs and she does curse a lot um personally for me i don't really mind that i don't really care it doesn't bother me but i can see you know sponsorships and brand ambassadors wanting to not reach out and would choose to go for an Alex L instead, someone who is a little bit more brand friendly. And there are other examples, of course, too. Frita, I think, apparently made like 20,000. I'm not sure how much Alex L made. Was it like 50,000 for like a brand deal? They roll blocking us. Now, I'm gonna have to call out a few creators so y'all can really, y'all can really understand what the fuck I'm talking about. Cause ain't no, ain't, ain't no other big, big creators gonna put a name on it. But I'm sorry, girl. I gotta whack you. I'm not trying to read you. But Alex Earl, come to the podium. Alex Earl has the luxury of being able to have white fucking privilege. Imagine a black girl comes online and says she has a dress with throw up in it. She's nasty as fuck. Look at how y'all talk about E. Kane. E. Kane and Alex Earl are, are twins. Twin flames. But what is Alex and what is E. Kane? What, what, is, what is Alex and what is me? Me and Alex, me and Alex engage me pretty much the same damn shit. And I'm more entertaining. And I have a podcast. And, 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 and I'm funny. Alex is funny to white people. Or is she even funny? And this is, not, this is not a drag, Alex. I'm not trying to drag you. I'm just keeping it fucking real. Because if you could get 50K for a brand deal, bitch, we both know I deserve it. 60K, 70K, 80K. You know what I'm saying? I'm having to settle right now for my little funky ass 20. But I want what you white hoes get. And I want it, I want it, to, I want it today ASAP, not tomorrow. Prada, I spent 6000 in your store. I better be receiving some gifting like y'all do every other white hoe that don't purchase shit from y'all. I need a small bottle of perfume or something for France. Fanita just sounded hella bitter in this clip, talking about what it is that she has going on, saying that she's funny, she's this, she's got a podcast. I don't know, I just feel like it went left very quickly. Like the way that she's speaking about Alex R and then saying no shade to Alex R. Well, that was full on shade. You literally brought her to the podium. You put an at on it. You spoke about her for like, what, the next minute or two? You were basically talking about Alex R and of course a bunch of other white influencers too. But the main one being Alex L. Now, Alex L has, she averages like, what, 2 million views per TikTok. She has 9 million followers. That's an amazing engagement. You can't say you do that um, 
consistently all the time you do get that a lot but not consistently all the time therefore i don't think you guys can be compared did race probably come to come to play in it maybe a little bit let's be honest maybe a little bit this is not the first time an influencer is going to come out and say hey guys like listen up the, the pay disparities is crazy between white creators and black creators jackie Ina has been saying this from the test of times i don't think it's necessarily only race though i think we have to really understand that alex o is a beauty lifestyle girly that bag is huge already okay Mene mcmichael absolutely love her she does like lifestyle mainly beauty fashion videos her bag is different that's how these women were able to make it into the forbes list i think last year also twenty thousand zoolas is a lot of money it is a lot of money and a lot of black creators do not make that they do not make that nobody is trying to say that Fanita should just take the twenty thousand and just be quiet and not complain you can have an opinion there is nothing wrong with that. It's just the way that she went about it. And also the way that she mentioned 20,000 in her TikTok video, she made it seem like it wasn't a lot of money when $20,000 can change someone's life and is a lot of money. Let's keep it real. It's actually a lot of money for one sponsorship. So imagine doing multiple and multiple and multiple in that month, in that week, in that year, like be for real. You've got to be smart now. You know, I don't think you can always complain about stuff. I think sometimes you just got to play the game. Obviously, don't do sponsorships every single day because fans are going to see right through it and just see it as like money hungry and you know the content just isn't say just isn't the same anymore but there's a way you can go about doing that so that it benefits everybody is what I'm trying to say. I just didn't like the way that she spoke about 20,000 like it was nothing at least to me they say to brands hey this is my charging fee like I, you know like you have to pay me like 2,000, 5,000 brands are like no i'll leave it to someone else then who would just rather take it because we're just taught to just take things and just be okay with it also i just realized my laptop screen is hella dirty <laughs> i just don't like this it's not a cute look for you it's not a cute look speaking of not cute looks i don't like the fact that people are literally now shaming her and saying that oh my god like you, you've got a bubble head like your head is bigger than your body something looks off something looks off something looks off for you to even be doing lipo and maybe the other things that you've done it ain't cheap so for you to now be needing money from your followers so it's cash out for you to like it and stop fucking playing with me and stop asking me questions yes i'm begging and yes i'm begging for money after our car job broke now what about it if you need money you clearly are broke you can't afford something but weren't you buying two prada bags like less than three weeks ago one for you and one for your friend my first luxury purchase beautiful oh my god this is such a beautiful bag Yes, period. Thank you. Good. Thank you. I just made my first luxury bag purchase. You bitches can't spell Prada. And I'm not done yet because I got to go get my best friend a matching one, but they didn't have the purse here. So I got to go get it from the other Prada store. Get with me, hoes, or get behind. And that's on me pocket watching, bitch. You posted that on TikTok. And like I said, I'm a fan of Fania. So I keep up with it and I enjoy the content. I'm just saying. Can we talk? Can we have an honest ass conversation, please? Can we? <laughs> um... I just don't understand it. What is the logic behind that one, Renee? Ah, oh, please, every night. Yay, Kaiko. I hope to never get to that place, to be completely honest with you guys. I hope to never get to that place where I have to come onto camera um, time and time again and say the same thing. I, I would I hope that I can keep that off camera and off social media because the internet is not going to live that one down. Speaking of things that the internet is not going to live down is the fact that people feel like you throw yourself at these white boys, at these TikTok white boys like Vinnie Hacker, um, Carrington. What was that about? Like, that was literally giving sexual harassment. Taking Vanina on a date to Sugar Bears, woo! <laughs> I love when white men spend their money on me. Reparations! <laughs> we're going to, uh, Omakase. Um, oh, you look sexy as fuck right here. Uh, that light hitting you? <laughs> Stop flashing that dick. I'm, I'm not flashing shit! I'm flashing that goddamn big old dick. <laughs> I love a big dick dude with a heart. <laughs> I love a big dick dude with a- Did we make out today? <laughs> We're making out all dinner. Okay, all cool. Dinner. You should put on some briefs, babe. Y'all, you was wearing underwear. Oh my, oh my god. Big dick shit. <laughs> <laughs> is this my butler big? Is my butler big? Yeah, it's super no. big. It looks so big. That looks super, <laughs> super <laughs> duper. What kind of coffee did you get? Oh, you want to try mine? I got black coffee. <laughs> Take my virginity. Thanks, Bonnie. Um, have a bonnet? Huh? No. What girl, what? For when I spend the night. I don't have a bonnet. What? He can have the rest. <laughs> I want to get shitty. <laughs> I don't need this shit. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm a girl and I shit. Cats out of the bag. Sue me. I fart too. Nah. Uh, it's kind of thin, but yeah, it's soft. It's kind of thin. <laughs> I got curly hair. What are you talking about? Thin. 
thin. I can. I only thing I thin about listen. me is it's the waist. Oh, what is this? This is my thing. Yeah. <laughs> so can, can we can you see how big your hand is on your spine? Oh, my, this is like this the most like pick me guy thing. It's like how, your hands. Are oh, so my god, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! My hands are so much smaller than yours. Oh my god! Oh, you know, god. you know, if you if you can fold it over, we're, we're gonna be good in bed. <laughs> Have you ever had sex with a black girl? Are you? <laughs> feed me, feed me, and then I'm gonna. Have you? <laughs> I don't know if I should answer. Have you ever had sex with a black girl? Have <laughs> <laughs> you? You read your experience on what's going on with him. Stop it. I can't. Is it him? Which one? Um, I can't tell you. She was down there like. It was weird to watch. So she posted a video with a TikToker creator called Carrington and she, I guess, was going out on a date with him. But then in the video, you can literally like hear him refer to this being like a business thing. Because he was like, okay, cool, I'm gonna put it in my calendar then. Like, he made some comments which kind of refer to it as like, uh, this ain't a real date. Like, this is just like business. Like, bro, like, we're working. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can be attracted to white boys. You can be attracted to pretty much any race. I love me any race. Like, hello, okay? Like, I'm an open-minded babe. That's just who I am. That's the way I've been brought up. And I like what it is that I like. Which is it all, <laughs> okay? I don't know Fanita's preference whatsoever. If she likes the white boys, okay, cool. But here's the thing, you need to go about it in a way where it's not giving desperation. You constantly asking, oh my God, would you date a black woman? Like how many black women have you had bleep with? Shut up. Like on behalf of every black woman who, um, just on behalf of us, we are getting secondhand embarrassment. Like shut up. Like if I could say shut up in every language, I would. These white boys think you're funny and they probably are not necessarily laughing with you but laughing at you it's just not genuine interactions for me it just comes across as like you constantly wanting to know like will you f me will you f me and it's like probably they wouldn't know like you're probably not even their type but they probably just say yeah i like black girls because you're on their neck and if they do black if they do like black girls okay cool I mean, it isn't the most convincing but hey um because then you go and check their following listens like you get what i mean though turning into that person that you hate that you would call out on social media. You've turned into her just like that. People are saying it's probably due to her being on drugs. I don't want to put that out there. Um, people are saying that she's having a manic episode. People are saying it's giving Gabby Hannah up. That's crazy. Like, sorry. That's wild. These white boys just don't like you. I'm just gonna say it straight up. Um, they probably like to be around you so that the, so that black fans can think, oh my God, like these white creators do like black people. Like, oh my God, they would date. They wouldn't, they wouldn't. Um, you don't need to be at these white boys' houses. Where you need to be is literally in therapy, okay? And you can afford to do it. I'm not buying that she's brokeity okity. And the fact that she said that she's moving from TikTok to Twitch, girl who's watching your Twitch streams, um, without you promoting it on TikTok, then you would not be able to have people watching it on Twitch. I don't like the way she speaks to her audience and then tries to double it down and then say, okay, I'm talking to my fans and not the haters. Girl, listen fans are now turning into haters everyone has their thoughts and opinions and she always shares them again nothing wrong with that but um when people do feel differently from her she starts to call people ugly you can't say anything productive to counteract that statement apart from call that person ugly an ugly bitch oh my god do this and that and that that that, and that, and that nobody that i've seen call out finita as ugly personally but hey please let me know where the bitch is at <laughs> like the videos it comes across as sexual harassment i mean she's literally like throwing her ass on the guy who just clearly isn't interested he's kind of like this in the video um making weird commentary you can see he's uncomfortable but he's just smiling because the cameras are out but i'm sure the camera wasn't there he probably would be like finita stop it but you know content baby content some people literally die on that hill like people just are obsessed with content Finita, don't go thinking that you're the baddest bitch now just because you are skinny okay she's a pretty girl but that mouth though, that mouth, when it opens and you start to say some outlandish things, girl, I cannot co-sign co that, I can't defend you, and I'ma call it out. I think it's very strange. That entitlement needs to be studied. Then saying your family's broke, deleting that video, saying that now you need help. Girl, which one is it? Go and sell the Prada bag. Put it on flipping Depop, Vinted, like someone will buy it, I'm sure, like, <laughs> you know? But how many of us actually think Fanita's broke? My hands, my hands are not up, because I don't believe that one bit. I don't believe that one, one bit. You're doing a podcast. I can only imagine you're getting paid for it. You're not doing it for free. You live in LA. 
who's paying the rent then do you know what i mean like now i'm gonna give her some grace if she truly is going through something then girl heal you need to understand that yes you lost all this weight but it doesn't mean you can have chat for everyone and just speak to anyone anyhow no 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 no, no. i don't like that i don't like that because even plus size people who lose weight they just lose the weight in peace and then just keep it pushing hi <laughs> but you have to come and make an announcement every 2.5 seconds uh, and making your whole personality trait people are going to start talking about that and before you are plus size remember you are black i do think that sometimes her delivery just isn't great but the message is there and also it's really wild to be calling people ugly and broke when your eyelashes are literally falling off in half these videos like you've got one set on the other set is coming out girl down below in the comment section share your thoughts and opinions down below i've been your hostess keisha and i'll catch you guys real soon for a brand new video bye